What is up everyone, JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're gonna to be looking at the Kaiser Dogfish. These names Kaiser's got coming on. Let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the Kaiser Dogfish, guys. This is an interesting one. We are going to start it off with some size comparisons, profile comparison, check the weight on this one, and then we're going to go ahead and jump into my thoughts and impressions with this one. Let's kick it off with a couple of budget knife comparisons. Here it is against the Migron Moriarl, which is a more medium-sized EDC, and then here it is against the Civivi Ball Tusk. As you can see, this is definitely a smaller-sized EDC. Definitely gives off gentleman vibes, too, if I want to be honest. We're going to go ahead and move the ball tusk out of the way, and we're going to grab the Spider Coast Shaman in case you're more familiar with these knives as opposed to the others. And we'll move the Moriarl out of the way and bring it back for profiles in just a second. Here it is against the Spider Co Para 3. So you can see the Para 3 is actually longer. Uh, I'm going to call it even. Definitely a little, little bit smaller on the blade tip and very similar handle length. So hopefully that helps with the profiles. Let's check out thickness. I like to do this so you can know what it's going to feel like in hand and or what it might feel like in pocket. So the Para 3, just a skosh thinner. I know it's probably really hard to tell. And hopefully the camera's focusing on the knives and not my hand. And then it's definitely going to be thinner than the Moriarl. The Moriarl is just a little bit more chunky overall. So not bad. Let's grab the scale from the corner here and bring it in for the weight. Sun decided to come out here, so I might need to adjust the camera here in a second. I don't think that matters where I put it. Uh, 3.4 ounces heavier, and I think that's because of the aluminum scales. Let's move the scale out of the way, and we'll jump into my thoughts and impressions. Let's kick it off with Ergos. This is definitely more small. If you don't like a big carry, if you like something a little bit more gentlemanly, hopefully that helps with being able to see the attention to detail. Unfortunately, unfortunately the sun is kind of peeking through a little bit through the blinds. But ergonomically, it is a full four finger grip. It does have a little bit of a cutout here to kind of meet where it touches the scales. And that jimping for the flipper there it does uh, poke up into the finger a little bit. For me, it's kind of middle finger, then the other fingers lying in the back here, the last two, and then the front finger coming up here. And in this position, it's fairly comfortable. It does fit me. No issues whatsoever. Uh, because I do have the larger hands, I can only take advantage of the last of this jimping out here for like the detail work, working out on the edges. And if I pull back, I get a little bit more cutting edge and I can get more finger into the jimping there as well. I do really like the radius here. This does add extra texture and grip. So it does feel again, more comfortable in hand, which I really do appreciate. Also, there is a filler tab here and I think it's a Chicago style screw. This is a review knife. Shout out to Lefty EDC for his pass around. Uh, this looks like it goes all the way through and probably hits right on the inside of this filler tab. And that's how you can kind of move it around. I'm speculating it's not mine, so I can't take it apart. The button on this with all Kaisers sits proud. They really just do a flat scale. Uh, and again, this is a designer knife. And I think so was the cut that I had on here just recently that has this type of button on it that does stick proud. Fortunately, it doesn't get in the way of the finger and it doesn't touch the thumb. Actually, my finger does hit it just a little bit, but I can't get enough leverage to squeeze it for myself. If you have medium to large hands, that's probably not going to be an issue. Pocket clip. I love this mill titanium pocket clip, guys. Really nicely radiused. It is chamfered and knocked down so that it doesn't poke into the hands. Very comfortable when using the knife. Let's go ahead and take it downstairs to the garage. We'll do a little bit of cutting and we'll come right back up to the table. All right, we got the uh, Kaiser River Dog. What is this one called? Dog fin. <laughs> Let's just check this one really quick. This one's coming via the pass round group. I am not 100% sure what kind of condition this one's in. Oh, oh, edge feels really good. This is, is this 154? Yeah, 154 CM. Uh, nice factory edge, even though it is coming via the pass around group. 
I have some uh, single ply cardboard. Let's just feel how it does. Oh yeah, it's a laser beam, guys. And it's actually very comfortable. It moves through the cardboard really well. Good bite on it as well. Mm. So it definitely feels like the cardboard for whatever reason uh, took a little bite into the 154CM, but it could also be that it was going through the pass around group because truthfully, Kaiser usually does a really good job on their 154CM. That was my fault. I caught it on the sharpening choil. Yeah, feels really good. Nice, thin, slicey knife and um, ergonomically kind of nice. Let's go ahead and kick it back up. So as you can see, plenty thin and slicey. It is a pass around knife, so there could be some stuff that was done to it beforehand, but it performed really well. Kaiser does a fantastic job with their 154CM. Ergos on it were really good, and you got a lot of flat surface here for power cutting and a little bit of belly to kind of get down on the table into those detailed cuts. The only thing I wish, I wish it was a black wash blade. These uh, DLC coated blades, as you can see, do not do a good job of masking at all. You can see anything that you cut with it on the uh, material, which is unfortunate. Great edge, good cutting geometry. It does have nice deployment methods here. You got the front flipper, nice tight jimping, which I do like on there. The smaller tight jimping works better for me. The uh, flipper tab is in a good spot, very low profile the jimping rounds on both so you can kind of catch this and let it rip and then same thing here come right up to the corner let it rip finger let it rip reach around let it rip like this is the perfect jimping here on this one definitely did a good job with it as i slide my entire oh maybe i didn't maybe i just felt the table move sorry a really good job with the jimping I, this is my favorite type of jimping here i don't think you could Ooh, maybe you can almost like a top flipper no nope, not quite not quite not quite and it's okay I, I like the usb style shape of this one here the detent on here feels pretty good it is a pass around knife so i'm not going to do like anything crazy here but it does seem like it's locked up solid there no concerns with that whatsoever i'm not going to beat on it anyway you know, if you back out of a cut and you're hitting it on something while holding the knife, A, you're not being super careful of your surroundings, and B, it's probably going to only happen on a rare occasion. I don't think repeatedly beating on a lock proves one thing or another. If you keep hitting it enough, the shock is going to cause vibrations to cause the button to move around, and it's no longer going to be accurate. Like one or two is good in my opinion. If it survives that, it's going to survive anything. Side to side, up and down, locked up solid. It looks like it's all T8 hardware. Let's check that real quick with this audacious concept with the Weeha bit. Yep, T8. T8. It does not look like it's a captive pivot, so I do have these little finger joints here that do take the bit, the bits. Um, I recommend these as well because once you put the bit in there, it's really kind of easy to hold the knife like that with the bit in there, and then you can work on it from that side. The knurling on here is really good and aggressive. It's going to be really easy to kind of keep that on there. Uh, anything that I missed? Reverse flick works good. Don't think you can. Oh, well, you could. Can you fail it? Yeah, you can if you concentrate. If you really, you know, if you're trying to fail it, you can fail it. But it could break in. It, you know, I don't know how many people have looked at this, but I, I like the design. Again, if this were mine, I would uh, take it down, clean it, put my own lube on it, tune it, and then I'd probably black wash the blade and put a fresh edge on it. I think the black wash would look really good. This one's coming in at... 99 bucks for 154 cm aluminum with the radius with the filler tab that matches button lock which is all the craze uh, what are my alternative recommendations recommendations for this if you are tired of button locks i would recommend the dotson from vosteed here 
filler tab, all titanium instead of aluminum, M390 titanium pocket clip with steel hardware, crossbar lock, which is going to be the superior lock here as far as strength. And it is really well tuned. Very satisfying to deploy. Again, this one here, you can fail if, you, if you're trying, if you're doing it on purpose, like you're just trying to push it and then when you feel it break, you're letting out. That's basically what you're doing. If you're genuinely trying to deploy the knife and you're not trying to show, hey, you can feel it um, by waiting for it to break and letting go of the, you know, letting go of the push. If you're just flipping it, if you're hitting it from the very top corner where the jumping rounds on this, it is satisfying to deploy. You're getting M390 with titanium and a crossbar lock for $210, which is $110 more than what I'm showing you on the table, but I just want to show you an extra $110 can go a really long way. Alternatively, if you like the button locks, you can check out the CJRB Echo or the Pyrite, whichever is your flavor. I like the Echo Echo because it's a little bit more friendly ergonomically than the Pyrite is to me. RPM 9 and titanium for 76 bucks. And then they sell you this pocket clip with the hardware necessary to mount it at a price of what comes to out to be 99 bucks for the AR RPM 9 blade steel. The RPM 9 is probably going to be more comparable to VG10 um, versus 154CM, but you are getting a titanium handle for 90 bucks um this one here is coming in also about 200 but that's for s90v titanium with either knurled or the fat carbon inlay you know so a hundred dollars more if you buy 200 dollar priced knives you could get one with really great steel really great ergos super comfortable to use and um ooh. That was an accident. A better detent, honestly. A better detent, yeah. It is much more crisp on the uh, the Echo than it is on the Dogfish, but the Dogfish does have to be tuned. Well, it has a front flipper, but it doesn't have a back flipper. I keep missing that because I can't get my finger in there. I don't want people to think that I'm trying to fail it. Um, it's just the, the access there it's a little tight, so I can't quite get my finger in there with the larger hands. 99 bucks though, not a bad deal. Uh, I like the setup. I think Civivi also has something with some uh, knurling, milling, something going on with the aluminum, and I like to see them doing stuff like that. It's very interesting. This coating does feel pretty good. It feels like this could hold up really, really well. It reminds me a little bit of the Applied Weapon Text coating. And I'm not quite sure what that is because it's not anodized aluminum. Um, it is definitely some type of coating. You can see here I have worn it. I know there's another spot somewhere. I think it's in the same spot. It's got to be where my fingers land. It's got to be where my fingers are landing on here that it's kind of hitting that. I thought there was something else on here. I carry this one a lot. Um, I love the S90V from Spyderco. And I like the, the knurling that's on here too. Kind of reminds me of that. This is a little bit more aggressive and I like it. It's not overly aggressive though. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know what you think about the dogfish. Did you pick one up? Do you like this design? Too big, too small, tired of button locks, love button locks because they're fidgety. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear that. Shout out to everyone out there that likes, uses the links, comments, and is subscribed. Shout out to my members getting early access to this. I love you guys. I appreciate all the support, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.